Monday Night Football, I think, tonight. So um, if you're watching that, fine. Go ahead. All I know is the Dolphins lost yesterday. Oops. So anyhow, I am by myself tonight. First time ever. Bob is in actually the hospital having surgery. So we wish him well. Get better, buddy. And we will see you back here soon. And uh, so tonight, it might be a little bit shorter because um, I'm just here talking to myself. <laughs> Anybody have questions, please put in the comments there. I will look at the questions and see what you got. But tonight we're going to be doing like scratching while your dog scratches, licks, or, you know, bites itself. Like I've seen dogs, you know, uh, bite at the paws, um, bite at their hiney their um tail um but first one thing i noticed that i start first with is do we have fleas because dogs can be allergic to the flea saliva i've had a dog like that myself that i kind of inherited from a client and he would chew himself raw he would lose hair because he would chew so much his skin would be red. He would have some bumps there and things like that. And he actually went to a home and they weren't, you know, treating for the fleas or anything like, like that. So when I got him back, he just looked awful. So I started, you can use different uh, flea preventatives. It's all up to you what you'd like to do. But for the three things, you want to treat the dog, the animals for one, treat your house, and also treat the yard. Um, those are the three things in that way, because there is a life cycle of the fleas, and you have to, you know, cut the life cycle, break the life cycle. So um, get with your vet about that. I will be the first to tell clients I'm not a vet. This is what I know. But if you need more, talk to your vet. And they can help you more with that because there's different ways you can battle the fleas with like frontline or advantage or um, different edible ones like, um, yes, I have a puppy coming over to me. Uh, so talk to you about, about that. That's one reason dogs can itch and, and things. Uh, another one is me and Amy talked about it last week. Um, over baiting your dog and having um, the dry skin because you might over bathe or bathe with the wrong shampoo. So we talked about don't use people shampoo, use dog shampoo. We have different pH than the dogs do, so they need that. Um, there's also uh, cream rinses or conditioners you can use on your dog so you can have their uh, skin and coat a little bit softer there. Um, and, you know, sometimes you can get an additive for the food that can help the skin and coat as well. Again, your vet can help you with that, okay? So, also, dogs can have allergies. Now, allergies are not just food and not just, you know, outside. It can be both. It could be one or the other um, outside People say, I've had people say, oh, there's, you know, pollen in the air, that kind of thing, and, and my dog um, is scratching a little bit more. So you can talk to your vet, too, about, um, I'm petting a puppy over here. Sorry, I get distracted. Um, you can talk to your vet about different allergy medications. They, they have different medications that they can use to help, you know, with it if, if it's, it's very bad. Um, so with food, um, I know there's usually sometimes a price concern with doing allergy testing because allergy testing can be expensive. You can do, um, you know, a process of elimination. Start with a really clean food, add one. It's, it'll take a long time because usually it takes your dog like 30 to 40 days to react to something. So you, you might take a long time to figure this out by adding and subtracting different ingredients with, with the food. And nowadays there's like 60,000 different foods to choose from. So, um, 
you know, first I would suggest if it was me, I would start with the proteins, pick a food that's like chicken, rice, and very clean. Then if they keep itching after a month, then go to like, say, a lamb and rice, a very clean food. Go for another 30 days. You know, also pay attention to the treats. I've had clients feed a very clean dog food, that kind of thing, and then they give them a milk bone, which is not very clean. Um, it's got, you know, byproducts and things like that in there. So I'm not a nutritionist, of course. I usually do say yet again, talk to your vet about it. Um, but look at the ingredients. The first three ingredients in your dog food is usually what it's mostly made out of. So you can um, look into that. Also, um, you can dogs can just have an OCD behavior, you know, that they want to lick. You've seen little dogs, especially, they lick and lick and lick and lick and lick their paws. Um, you're sitting there watching TV and you hear them looking over there and you're just like, stop, you know. Um, could be that they're a little bit bored or something like that. So, you know, break up their schedule. Do obedience with them. That's the first thing I'll say. Do some obedience with them. Take them for a walk, that kind of thing. If you're walking, we'll kind of backtrack to um, outside allergy. If you're walking into a common area and you don't know what's out there, you know, when you come back home, uh, wipe their paws off, you know, so that they don't have any residue of anything um, that might have been sprayed out there in that yard. So, um, or a common area of grass or that kind of thing. Um, yeah, we had a little comment about bitter apple spray. Bitter, bitter apple spray does not taste good. I've accidentally tasted it myself. So you can spray that, you know, lightly on the paws or something like that. So then they don't lick that kind of thing. Um, so we want to work from the inside out. Look at the food, talk to your vet about the food, um, the fleas, anything like that. You know, eliminate where the dog resides and everything. And this may be one thing you can look into because with people, it affects people too, is laundry detergent. You can go and get the, um, the clean laundry detergent, the natural, you know, like the Tide Free and Clear or what have you, so that you're not putting extra chemicals on their, their beds and wash that with, with the clean stuff and, and like don't use the, um, the puppy is like having fun with the green screen. <laughs> um, you know, the, the liquid softener or the, the softener sheets, maybe don't use those. It could be some kind of, you know, your dog's skin doesn't like those things either. So, you know, look into all possibilities. Um, whenever I have a client where a dog is doing a behavior or something, I'm like, you know, write down what's going on. Write down what you were doing right before it started, your dog started doing that. So then maybe we can, through the process of elimination, find out what the trigger is. So there, there could be a lot of different triggers. And Amy pointed out the different brushes too, you know, make sure you're using a soft enough brush, one that's not too, you know, harsh on the, the skin when you're brushing. Um, and if you take your dog to a groomer, you know, you should be able to ask them, you know, what kind of shampoo or cream rinse are you using? Um, try a different one. If they have different ones there that they use, just say, you know, my dog's been itching a lot. Do you have an oatmeal shampoo you can use or something like that at the vet, at the um, groomer? Sorry. So they shouldn't have a problem doing that. They should have, you know, different, you know, types of shampoos there. You know, the whitening shampoo for their white dogs and and the um, the oatmeal shampoo for ones that have sensitive skin. So you'll see also dog foods that will put up in letters, you know, sensitive skin formula, you know, but really read the label. A lot of times 
what do we do even with commercials? We just see what the big letters say and then, oh, let's buy it. Turn the bag over or look on the side of it. Read what's in it, you know, and you may find one or two ingredients that are in different foods that you've tried. Be like, wow, maybe I need to find a food without that ingredient like corn or something like that. Okay. Um, let's see, I've got to kind of think to myself here, what else we can talk about. The, um, you know, the, Margaret, one of the things I've yes. noticed is uh, at the shop, we had some very high end dog food that was like five yeah. stars everywhere. And we ended up taking it home to uh, feed to Emma and Emma, it actually made her feel bad. I, wow. I think that many dogs have a different makeup, just like humans do, just like how we can be allergic to certain things that other people aren't, how it is that our bodies function differently than other people and so on and so forth. And I wonder if it's the same thing with dogs. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Christopher. We have, you know, dogs that have um, one of my first jobs was at a pet store. We had all these different pet foods, of course, now not 60,000 different ones, but, you know, probably 20. Anyway, we have the foods for the high drive and, you know, foods for older dogs, food for puppies and that kind of thing. And like you say, if, if, if you have a dog that, you know, doesn't like gluten, like we, there's people that doesn't, their systems don't like gluten. And in dog foods, there's corn, gluten, and byproducts and all kinds of things like that. And there could be, you know, one ingredient that doesn't work. Like I have a food that I feed and my one dog, Marsoc, did not, his skin and coat didn't really agree with it. I mean, when we rescued him, he had demodectic mange. So he has a sensitive kind of coat you know, so we switched him to a, um, my vet suggested a white fish, a potato, and he's done wonderful on it. And the other food was just, you know, a chicken based food, you know, so he might not agree with the chicken and, you know, Emma could have something like that. We're just a simple ingredient. Her system just does not agree with. So, you know, like Christopher said, you know, pay attention look at the ingredients and see which one works. And just because it works for one in your house, it might not work for the other. Yeah. And I think that what it ultimately, now that I remember, I think Emma was getting ear infections from it, but wow. all the other dogs perfectly fine with it. Yeah. You know, so it's crazy. It's treats too. You know, they can go the same way with the treats and, um, so I've had that with, with dogs I train or that kind of thing at the house where, you know, we'll switch them to a different food and then they have loose stool or something like that. And it's like, what, what is not working with you? So then I'll eliminate all the treats and just use the food and then they're fine with just the food. And I try one treat up. Oh, that's what it is. It's that treat. There's something in that treat that doesn't agree with with this dog, but with other dogs are fine. It's funny how it works like that. Right? I have a puppy over here just like, pay attention to me, not that computer. Yes. So right now I can pet him and let him feel like I'm consoling him with that kind of thing. But when I'm not petting him, you know, I got to work on him puppies want attention. So later in life, we don't want him barking or anything for attention if I'm paying attention to something else, right? So like if you're on the phone, I'm going to another subject. So he's walking away right now and he's fine. Now he's, he's laying down on the floor and he's just going to take a little rest right next to me and that's fine. Um, we just don't want them being demanding. So I just wanted to explain on that 
You know, we've also seen a lot of dogs come in there that, you know, we, we've had a lot that we've had to get of hypoallergenic bass to or oatmeal bass because of allergies. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've been seeing that often many vets don't catch with dogs, you might be good to have them look at it is thyroid. You know, they start to yes. lose hair, they're itching all the time and all that stuff. And uh, what happens is, you know, sometimes the vet doesn't want to deal with it and will just put them on a certain kind of shampoo. Yeah, and, let's band uh, it. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of the times, you know, if, if you have something like that, it might be good to ask your vet about uh, thyroid if it's the dog's been checked for thyroid issues. Yeah, and that brings up a, a memory of my a dog I had, Shadow. She was probably about, I don't know, say 12 at the time. And this has to do with what we're talking about. She would have, she would smell. And I'm like, hmm. So I bathed her, and she smelled fine for three days. And then she'd stink again. And I'm like, you don't roll in the dirt. You don't do anything like that. Why? You know, and so I took her to the vet, and she did test her thyroid, and her thyroid was slow. So we started thyroid medication, and it helped. So it's interesting you mentioned that. I'd forgotten about that. But um, you'd think it was just maybe something she was eating or something she was rolling in or this, that, and the other. It ended up being just what you said, the thyroid. So um, you can do different things that will band-aid symptoms just like we do with us you know but there might be a core issue that's going on that that's that's the main fuel of this so that's why i always say to check with your vet because it could be something different than what we think it might not be a food allergy it might not be that your dog's rolling in dirt or this, that, or the other, it could be the thyroid, like you said. So, do you and have any questions? And sometimes the vet may get it wrong at times, and they have to try out a couple of different things. Usually, from what I've heard from clients, maybe mm -hmm. you can tell me that if this is true or not, is they'll start out with a different kind of food, and then they may go to a uh, certain kind of uh, bath, and then they'll go to a... Um, uh, an injection for the allergies and and so on and it's and i guess it all just kind of comes down to where you know uh, they ha they have to find out what what works right right because they always have every vet has i think their starting point and you know if i say things to my vet like this that or the other and if it's like what i said with shadow well let's do some blood work and let's see, you know, what it could be. Um, start with this, start with that. Um, and just like with, if there's an infection, she'll take a swab and send that off to the lab. So then they'll send her a report on what antibiotics the infection will not respond to and what it will respond to. So that way you're not keeping going back like three or four times spending all this money, you know, trying different medications, you get it right the first time. So every vet has their different ways of doing things and, and their start off, their first step, I would say. Like you said, um, everyone has their own way. But, you know, one of the best things you can do, and I've done this with doctors with myself, is write a list, write down questions, write down what's going on right before it or after it, during it. And that way you can go in and get everything looked at in that first visit. And then maybe it'll give your vet a better angle or direction to go in. Is it maybe a food direction? Is it a shampoo direction? Or is it like outside elements direction where a shot might be needed, like a allergy shot, like people get. Um, and like you said, your your daughter's getting ear infections from, you know, a type of food, which might have been causing too much yeast or something. 
and you keep cleaning the ears, cleaning the ears, and they may think, some vets may think it's just an ear problem, but if you look deep enough, oh, the food is the root cause of this. Let's switch the food. So, um, there yeah, you when go. things like that pop up, I, I, I often say, and maybe I'm wrong in thinking this, but I, and maybe you could tell me if I'm right or not. When something changes, like if you change your food or, you know, if they're in a different environment or maybe it is that your lawn has been treated or something like that, if there's some sort of change that kind of causes a reaction mm -hmm. of itching or ear infections or something like that is, you know, uh, we kind of came to the conclusion that it was the food that was doing that to Emma and we switched her back to the Rachel Ray's. Um, so is that usually the best way to go to kind of center in on those things? Maybe more information you give the vet saying, you know, hey, we switched to this food and all that stuff helps them to make a better, um, a better uh, um, uh, diagnosis. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right with that. And, and also with behaviors, because if, if a dog's been fine, you know, with behavior and, and they say, Hey, Margaret, I need you to come back because um, Lucky has started digging holes in the backyard. And to me, that's, you know, kind of like anxiety type stuff or stress or something. And I'll just ask, has anything changed in the last month? What has been different? What has been new? And just like you said, that could happen with health issues too with dogs with scratching or itching or this, that, and the other. You look, at, look at the environment. Look at your household. Sometimes it's just, oh, yeah, we have a, a new person that's living in the house. Or our daughter went off to college two weeks ago. And, man, this started right after she left. Your dog is missing her, you know, that kind of thing. So let's, you know, keep her busy, try different things, you know, and, and we'll go into that. But, um, you know, look at what's new in the dog's life different elements, that kind of thing. That can help you narrow it down big time because you, you, you know, you a lot of times don't connect ears with food. And you were smart to do that, to connect the two. Yep. Oh, that wasn't me that connected it. It was Amy. She knew it. She knew immediately. Uh, yeah, she's, a, she, she's, she's the, the genius daughter. on that stuff, not me. <laughs> She's a genius. Well, I know she's an outstanding groomer, and she's got the background of have working at a vet before. So she's got that, you know, thinking up here because of working with a vet. She thinks that way, which is good. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed doing that show with her last week, um, having her here and the different, you know, angles we take with with the dogs and and talking about that. So if Bob is still healing next week, we'll have to, you know, get her back on here. Yeah. Make sure to text her next time. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was all me. I'm just like, you know. Uh, yeah, because the audience that sees me on here, they're like, this guy doesn't know anything in the right. <laughs> Who is he? Why is he here? Um, um, I'm a big deal. I have many leather-bound books. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. People know me. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so did you get any interesting clients today? Any inter interesting dogs at your shop today? Um, not really. Mm -hmm. uh, today we had uh, uh, quite a few uh, people call in today and all that stuff. Um we did have one that kind of reminded me of something that you said that, um, and this little guy has been coming to us every couple of weeks for his bath and he has thyroid issues and has been losing a lot of hair, but his owner recently got married and the daughter went off to school and they had mentioned his behavior had oh. been, been different, you know? And so, you know, sometimes people might react and say, Say, oh, maybe the guy's being mean to the dog, Ben. And I'm saying, uh, saying, I don't, I don't know if if that's true. It might just be a change in the environment that they don't like. Yeah, dogs can react, and and like I, one of my dogs, Emily, when I go out of town, she loves my friend Jane that comes stays in the house. She loves her to death. But there's times where she 
doesn't eat as much. Mm -hmm. You know, and they show their frustration and they show dogs can start chewing things. They can start digging, like I said, in the yard. They can start, you know, stealing clothes. They can, you know, do all sorts of things to show that they are upset, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Amy always tells me that when I come over there, Emma is always on her worst behavior because I give her so much <laughs> attention. She just kind of stars for it. And right now, she, you know, a lot of your, your dogs right now are, especially short hairs, are shedding like crazy getting in their winter coats. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, she comes and wants to be petted, and then there's a pile of hair in the floor <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> And it's like, don't worry about it. I'll sweep it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was talking about our own dogs. Amy was talking about brushing teeth last week. Mm -hmm. So I went out and got a good, I had lost the kit I had. I had a kit to brush my dog's teeth with. And then I, I as soon as you look for it, you know, what you're looking for is not there. So I couldn't find it. So I went to the pet store and I was like, got to find a good kit. So I found one and I thought I'll video doing Marsock's teeth because he's got a little stinky breath, you know, dogs. What are you going to do? So I sent you that video. So why don't we show the people how fun it was to do his teeth? Absolutely. Hey guys, I'm here to uh, show you how I'm going to brush my dog's teeth. So I got this, you can get it at any pet store, okay? And it's just a toothbrush, a little thimble there, and you're going to start off with the thimble because that is a little easier for your dog to adjust to. Toothpaste, and Here is the thimble. So I'm going to start off with this with Marsal. Okay, so I need to do the next one now. Yeah, so now the next one, actually, I did a few of them, and this one was the best one. All right. He, okay, I'm going to brush uh, Marsal's teeth here. And I've done a little bit of it. He likes the toothpaste, as you can see. Sit. Good boy. No. There's got to be rules. There's got to be behavior. Just, yeah, toothpaste there. And then you're going to let him lick it. And then you can work your teeth, you know, your, your finger a little bit with the little brush thimble. It's got little knobbies on it, as you can see. See little knobbies on there. And you can, you know, work it in his mouth, let him lick it, let him have fun with it. As long as, you know, the flavor's getting in there, you know, he's going to like it. So, it wasn't really that tough to do. I mean, you don't have to do it all at once. Like, he's really getting it, so I'm going to do the bottom teeth there once, you know, because he's, he's licking it and kind of putting his mouth on it. So, as his mouth is on it, I'm going to brush the teeth that are there. And it's making it easier. Instead of trying to force it where, you know, do what you want. <laughs> I just had a dog push the camera over. <laughs> You know, get the front teeth there, you look at it, and then, you know, when he gets the back teeth, and he, he's trying to, he's trying to chew on this a little bit, so you can get the back teeth while he's got it back there, and say hi, yes, so he likes this, you know, I see, I saw at the pet store, they have, you know, this flavor, which is probably poultry flavor, and then they have bacon, and they have, what was the other one? I want to say eggs. Bacon and eggs. They had bacon and they had uh, another flavor there too. So you can, you know, try different ones. Try not to do a lot at once because you don't want to throw this into, into their system. And then their system go like, what is that? And then maybe they have, you know, a little loose poopy. So do a little bit. He's still working, you know, trying to work on it. And I'm just working that, you know, little thumb thing around in his teeth getting that tartar and stuff. So, this is me and Marsock signing off from toothbrushing. <laughs>
we uh, have had, had gotten some of those um, because we originally were using these. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, these, you know, work pretty well as well. But then I think we ordered from Ryan's and they were out of these. So we ended up getting some of the ones that go on the finger like a thimble. Yeah, and this came with a toothbrush as well. So you start with mm -hmm. the thimble and you can work up to that one like you have. And, you know, he, there, I didn't even put more on there. I put some at the beginning of, you know, the second video and he just kept wanting to lick it. And I just kept put, you know, but yeah, those are, those are awesome. They can really get into those teeth and everything. See, and that's the trick too, because with the poultry flavor and all that stuff, they're associating it with their treats. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh yeah, you know, we've had so many dogs that when they've seen this, they go and they start trying to eat it because they think it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness we don't have to floss our dog's teeth because that would just be a nightmare. No, but oh. uh, getting the vet to do a tooth scraping every now and then is good because mm -hmm. I think Amy pointed this out last week that in terms of the health of the dogs, the teeth are kind of the first line of defense. Yeah, and, and one thing... This is what I do is is I will make sure I have my dogs eating like a dry kibble food. You know, they eat that all the time. I don't see any harm in put you know canned once in a while. But if you you know have your dog eating canned food or something like that all the time, there's there's nothing really breaking apart, keeping their teeth clean, and then you need like um, in their shop. In the lobby, they have um, like nylon bones and different bones to chew on that that can help them work. You yeah, nylon bones and uh, weedy or what is it, whimsies and mm -hmm. uh, greenies are great for that kind of stuff. And um, I think Amy mainly gives the dog the, the dogs the dry food. Now Emma, being a Rottweiler, they are really bad with their mobility when, especially when they're when they get big. And mm -hmm. so she goes and gets a mobility thing from um, from Amazon. I forget the name of the company. Uh, or no, she gets it from Chewy. She gets it from Chewy. And um, it's funny because Mains will go and take his, but Emma's, she has to go and crush up and put inside a yogurt. <laughs> it's like a, a joint supplement. It, yeah, yeah. It's, and, it's, and it's helped her out greatly. You know, yeah. it's pretty pricey, but it, it 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 works wonders because now Emma will run and all that stuff, and she was constantly, whenever she would jump, she, it would hurt her hips and all okay. that. And so, as as soon as taking that, that has helped out a great deal. But she is still, as you mentioned earlier, going and licking her paws, and we've tried the bitter apple, which works great. But mm -hmm. now she's like, ah, I'm not going to enjoy it, but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes habit takes over so you have to break that cycle of the habit but yeah emily my uh older dog she's she's 12 now and she's um i did a doggy dna test on her that was super interesting because i have always thought that she was like black lab mix or something but she has no lab in her she's actually shepherd some great Pyrenees, some great Dane, this, that, and the other. So uh, we should do a show on doggy DNA. Oh, gosh. That would be I would fun. believe the things that we see in the shop. People would go and put on the schedule, oh, I got a great Pyrenees, and then walks in a Shih Tzu. And like, <laughs> we, were, we were told that this was a great Pyrenees. <laughs> It's like, no, that's not a They were close. <laughs> Whoever told you that is uh, mm -hmm. incorrect. Yeah. yeah, now the big thing is uh, black mouth cur mix. And my brother actually has one. But some of them, I don't know where they get that this is a black mouth cur mix. It doesn't even look like one. It looks more like a, you know, like a German short hair pointer or something like that. That must and, be something uh, in Florida. We haven't seen those uh, up here yeah it's it's i don't know but they're inter black mouth curves are interesting looking dogs they're they're part of the hound group i think but um yeah 
I just put, put Emily on a joint supplement as well, and it did, it helps some, but I think hers is worse than that. Yeah. So she's starting to use, uh, I just started Remedil with her, and we'll see how that goes. I've only done a few days, so it takes a little while to build up, but your dog's hips are important. Yep. So I wonder if it's good, like, to start a joint supplement when they're younger? I would say for, you know, considering how it's affected Emma, mm -hmm. I would probably say being preventative, you know, because anything with any kind of health, you know, be kind of being, being preventative might be the way to, the way to go. Uh, that would be. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that would, you know, sometimes I think I should have started her on stuff earlier but then you think then when they have joint problems then where do you go you can't you've already using that then oh, exactly. you go to the stronger so and especially when they're big and they and and when they're puppies they want to jump off of things and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff and that's not something that you're going to stop so if that happens with an owner an owner might blame yeah. themselves but they really shouldn't you know right. um because puppies you know, are going to be puppies exactly right right so um yeah i think one one big thing i mean you've had dogs in the grooming shop that have had a flea problem and just itched and scratched themselves like crazy and and you know it's it's that's pretty much i'd rather have that pro that as a problem that i need to fix because that's easier to fix yeah and, and and the thing with the flea stuff is there's a lot of stuff out there that I don't know. I think uh I think uh you know was uh, made on the uh on the uh the, the, the counterfeit Indian market or something like was, that. Um, yeah. because the thing that we have found that works the best, better than the Sorelto collars, better than you know, many of the others is one called Avantix. Yeah, um, so that yeah. one has been very good. Now they don't like it because you got to put it on their shoulder blade. You go and you pour it out on their shoulder blade and all that stuff, and it burns a little bit. But um, every time we have used that, the next day had have had nothing to worry about, and it and it lasts for a while. Yeah, those things work. I remember when it, the medication before that advantage when that first came out i was living in north carolina at the time and i had two white cats and they would get out sometimes and i lived like in the country so i went to this vet i'm like i don't know what to do to keep getting fleas i i can't sit there and comb each because back then you would have to bathe yeah. your cat which was a nightmare in itself oh, <laughs> and then and then flea comb you know all the fleas off and so he's like, this had just come out. And he's like, this is how you use it. And he, you know, told me how to use it. So I took it home and I was in the bathroom with one of my cats and, and I put it on the shoulder blades there and I sat there with a cat. I mean, I could just watch the fleas dying. On this cat. Yeah. It was amazing. That stuff was amazing. And so, um, yeah, that stuff is just, it's great. Yeah, it's always good, you know, like if a person's trying to figure out a product to use for, for fleas, you know, uh, to, to, to research the product, go and look at the reviews on like Amazon or Chewy mm -hmm. or whatever it is mm -hmm. that they order it from because we have seen so many people just get a total and complete lemon saying, oh, we give them flea, flea treatment and then they come in and they're you know, full of fleas, you know, when they come in. All right. And, you know, and, and that's always a nightmare on a groomer because you have other people's dogs there as well. And so you're trying to prevent. True. Yeah. And you don't want an outbreak in your store either. So yeah. um, one thing I asked Amy after the show was, because I had heard this is true and it is true. Like if you use frontline, don't go and then, bathe your dog with flea and tick shampoo. That would make sense because if you're going to, you know, if they're going to go get a bath of something that you're applying to them, you know, just like if we go and we put, you know, something on our hands or something for whatever reason, as soon yeah. as we go and 
take a you know go and take a bath and all that stuff then it's going to come off yeah just use like you can bathe your dog but just use a mild shampoo not a flea and tick because it kind of cancels out the front line and ah. what did she, she say like it the flea and tick is a harsher shampoo and it'll take strips everything off the coat and off everywhere and it it, it then reduces the effect of the front line so that that makes sense because uh, it seems that that would probably be a stronger kind of shampoo then which mm -hmm. would have that effect so that makes sense yeah and then you're putting the front line and then you're using another chemical shampoo that's you know ours that's not good either so let's use you know the mild shampoo on the dogs once you do that but you know i also have gone to like a next guard, which is, you know, you need a prescription for that. But some, uh, but like you said, don't go searching for the cheapest one because you might get a counterfeit and you don't know exactly what's in it and it could, it could harm your dog too. Okay, okay. Cindy says, but next guard spectra flea and tick and warmer combo. Oh, so that's like instead of um, using like heart guard, also you can use just one next guard and it takes care of everything. Oh, that's cool. Wonder how long she's been using it and how long it's 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 worked for, you know? Because that's the real test of time. You know, right, right, time. right. Yep, yep, yep. There are some things like that too. Like she probably heard about it from her vet and she talks to her vet through these things. And that's what I do. I always go through my vet on things because also if you don't know who you're ordering from, you don't know if it's sitting in a hot warehouse for months on end and you know, that kind of thing. But oh, exactly. if your vet, you know, recommends this stuff and says, Hey, order it here. They trust it, you know, go for it. Absolutely. You know, and that's, and, and that's the same with basically anything, you know, for instance, I get a lot of radio and guitar equipment and sometimes I see, Oh, buy a new Stratocaster for $70. It's like a little bit unsure about that one. You know, is you know, if something is, uh, you know, uh, or, uh, too good to be true. Yeah. If it's a little bit too discounted, then, you know, chances are you might end up getting um, a, a lemon. But uh, Cindy says she's been using this for three years and it's worked out great for her. So that oh, might be cool. something for people to look out for. Yeah, yeah. And she's in the heart of Texas there in the heat where, you know, it's like here in Florida, probably fleas and ticks all year round, you know, down there by Austin, I think is where she's at. Where she's at. Oh, um, yeah. Well, where Amy's daughter lives, she's like right there in the woods. So that is a constant issue. And one of the things I am worried about is, you know, with her start, you know, and her dogs are always getting fleas and ticks. And she just started doing um, uh, pet sitting. And I'm sitting there going, you got to be very careful, you know, with, you know, your dog's constantly getting fleas. Because as soon as you have a client come home and be like, my dog has fleas. You know, it's like, oh, uh, that's not going to be a good review. Right, right. Yep, north of Austin there. Yep. Very cool. So, yeah, with that's that's a big thing with with um, the scratching and itching. And, and like you said, too, you go to someone's house that has a flea problem. You can bring those fleas home with you. Oh, yeah. On your shoes, on your clothes. That kind of thing. So, yeah, Amy uh, once had a person ask her, uh, "Can fleas fly?" And it's like, no, but they can <laughs> jump really far. Yes, they can. They <laughs> boing, boing, boing. Yes, they can. And and ticks. I've I those can like invade your house, and it's hard. Really, it's harder to get rid of ticks, and they can go like in through your baseboards, under your baseboards and, and into your house. It's just amazing where these animals go. So, you know. Yeah, the best thing to do with that is just to burn down the house, you know. <laughs> I mean, 
fire. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to survive that. You know, no, cockroaches. The cockroaches, they survive anything. Well, they can can survive an, a nuclear react re, uh, a nuclear reaction, but they can't survive being set on fire. <laughs> Those poor guys. It's like they're the enemy, the big enemy. Um, but I'm sure you know Bob does some hunting, I think, and he probably has experience too with you know ticks and that kind of thing. So we may do uh, a talk with him on. He's probably had to detick his self and probably his dogs before. So, yeah, that's we'll why he told me that. that he's in the hospital right now is because he had a major infection of ticks and uh, and and worms and all that stuff. So they're <laughs> having to to deworm him. Oh man, that that's awful. <laughs> yeah, he'll be back and he'll let us know. Um, and Cindy says, and yes, dealt with. Baby is her dog. Allergies last year, no problem. Switched her to a locally sourced food. Got benefits of natural ingredients like people eating local bee honey to build immune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Good idea. Yeah, that's one of the things that Amy's done done with me uh, a, a couple of years ago. Every year, you know, I don't even really eat honey except for during Rosh Hashanah. And so, you know, she got me a, this thing for money of honey from a place over in Asheville. <laughs> And she told me the same thing, and I never knew that. Yeah, I've heard that before. Like, eat locally based honey, and it's it's got, I got you know, bees are the pollinators, and so you build up local immunity to local flowers, the local trees, and stuff like that. It's real interesting stuff. Doesn't really seem to help my allergies at all. No. No. Man. When I was growing up, I thought I had allergies. I always, you know, would get colds and stuffed up and that kind of thing. What turned out with me that it's non-allergic rhinitis, which I my body reacts to, like, perfume smells, change in weather, you know. I went to college up there in North Carolina. When I would go up there and be colder, i get a cold. Then when I come home for break, it'll be hot in South Florida. I get a cold. So what is it called? <laughs> Rhinoceros? <laughs> well, they call it when you get sinus sinus, like allergic rhinitis. She's Mine is non-allergic. Yeah. They're just making up stuff to me. Yep. <laughs> I'll, I have to write it out. But now I have non-allergic reactions. Oh, nice. So... The honey wouldn't help me. I Oops. don't even I don't even know if it's used for that or not, but uh you know, I would think that considering that I have a, 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 a you know, just like everybody in this area allergic to pollen and mm -hmm. all that stuff, I would think that the local bee pollen, you know, and all that's or the local honey that contains the pollen would be something to kind of counteract it because you know, scientifically speaking, I would think that considering that when you get an allergy shot, you're kind of shot up with a little bit more allergen, so your body fights it and is able to defend itself a little bit more. So I think that local honey would kind of work in the same respect, but I'm not a scientist, so I don't know. Right, me neither. I don't know how all that works, so. I'm a mad scientist. That might be. A mad scientist. <laughs> how funny. I'd make a good well, one. I think we've talked about some good stuff tonight with the itching and scratching and that kind of thing. Just keep an eye on it and talk to your vet about it. Write your notes. Process of elimination. And you can do it. There'll be a test next week. Yes, we will have a written and oral test next week. So be ready. Excellent. Anything else? Anything else? Cindy, do you have any other questions? Well, she didn't really have questions. She just let us know what she's done. She says, thanks all. Thank you, Cindy, for being here. Appreciate it. And Christopher, as always, thank you. Not for doing this. my bills in the mail. All right. <laughs> I'll be looking for it. <laughs> as I go destroy my mailbox. Now, 
So let's see. Let's try to get 80 next week. If Bob is not ready, we're going to let him heal as long as he needs to. And then just wait. Bob comes back. He will be on fire, and he will be ready to go. And it will be his topic, his show. We'll see what he wants to do when he comes back. Absolutely. And he'll have that new face tattoo that he uh, ended up getting while he was in Georgia. He ended up getting the whole side of his face tattooed. So oh, he, got it. That. that should be interesting. Yep. Yep. Let's see what he comes out with. All right. There you go. You yeah. can get Cindy. Cindy can take can can uh, be in the waiting there. Yeah, she she trains dogs as well, so cool. um, we'll let you know. And uh, well, thanks for joining us, everyone. And Christopher, thanks again. He is the brains behind this technologically. <laughs> He knows what he's doing with this. I push buttons. That's about it. <laughs> you don't push. Whose buttons do you push? <laughs> well, so, a lot of people. See, watch. See, there's Cindy. There's not Cindy. <laughs> there's Cindy. There's Cindy. This is the extent of what it is that I do. And did you know that some people charge like $100 an hour to do this? Like it's really any sort of work? <laughs> That's some self-important people right there. That seriously, you know, and then like the music people with you know mixing the music, they push the bar up, they push the bar down, they push the well, bar up. Well, it's a little bit more than that. I ended up doing you guys' intro, as a matter of fact. I and I gotta kidding. say, it's there's a lot involved with that. That took I'm me several days. So settle <laughs> down, take your medicine, it's okay. Got it. <laughs> All right, everybody. You heard Christopher. Settle down. Take your medicine. Watch your TV shows tonight. Watch your dog. See if there's any itching or scratching you don't like. And go through the process of elimination and write down your notes. Take them to your vet. I hope everything goes well. Like, share, and subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it. And we will see you next week. Thanks, Christopher.